Well, when they were built, roughly speaking, about a million dollars each, we, we treat them as, as the most precious things we have. But a perfectly aligned mirror isn't all it takes to see amazing images from space. The glass itself needs to be perfectly polished, and not just a quick rub down with a cloth, no. This is polishing on an incredibly small scale. Think of literally polishing atom by atom, and you're getting close. So how on earth do you achieve it with something like this? A sandblaster. To see galaxies billions of trillions of miles away, the Keck Observatory first needs to collect vast quantities of light. The huge mirror does just that. But to see tiny details of distant and dim galaxies, Keck's mega mirror also needs to be perfectly smooth. Just one tiny irregularity will distort any images and defeat the whole point of the exercise. Cue our next connection, which takes us back to 1871, just after the American Civil War. Benjamin Chu Tillman has been a general in the Union Army. Legend has it that Tillman sees patterns etched onto windows by sand blown by the desert winds. Whether or not that's true, Tillman did invent a machine that blasts small particles at high speed. Today, Tillman's machine is found wherever you want to strip rust or paint or dirt. It's a sandblaster. To see how it scours paint from an automobile wing, I visit the workshop of Hawaii's Mr. Sandman, Bob Freeman. So this is where it happens? This is our sandblast room. That looks like the business end of it. <clears throat> this is the sandblast nozzle. The abrasive is leaving this nozzle at supersonic speed. Supersonic? Wow. Right directed at the surface and the particles coming out of the nozzle will take off whatever coating is on the thing that you're sandblasting. Okay, so I just point that at the thing. Hold this, I suggest putting it like this because it okay. kicks back a little bit. Right. This is called a dead man control. Dead man? They call it a dead man because if you pass out or you trip, it'll shut off so you don't get hit with the blast. I don't want to do it, eh? I'm blasting that, not me. Well, that's up to you. You're going to be holding the nozzle. Okay, so I, I hold that. So you hold tell this. I'm not dead. This is a safety button. You press that in, press that down, and be ready for it to start. Right. Well, uh, this is the business end. I need this. Okay, and I blast. Here we go. Sun blasting commence. Ooh, nice oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah. You know, I can get used to this. It's quite therapeutic. They might have to drag me away from it. <laughs> it works. Well, of course it works. It's been working since Tillman invented it. But it's all well and good for car parts and the like. But when you want to do finer work, even sand isn't fine enough. You need to go to another level entirely, an atomic level. You can't polish a mirror with a sandblaster. It wouldn't make it anywhere near smooth enough. For a perfectly smooth mirror, you need to fire particles that are millions of times smaller than sand at it. A hundred years after Tillman invents the sandblaster, optical technicians construct a blaster which fires individual atoms. 
Without it, Keck's mirrors wouldn't produce sharply focused images. Now the technology is also used to dissect individual cancer cells. Sharpshooter Dr. Andy Bushby shows how it works. So this is it, isn't it? Whoa, that's your atomic blaster. What do you actually call this thing, for real? This is a dual beam environmental scanning electron microscope. Wow. Dual beam, you see, I'm loving that. But microscope, that's just for looking at things. I want to sandblast things at an atomic level. Well, we can do that. Because this is a dual beam microscope, we have an electron beam that comes down here that we use to look at the sample. And over here, we've got an iron beam, which we use to cut away the sample with great precision. Ions are electrically charged atoms. They can cut stuff atom by atom. Andy wants to show me how. Exactly. In the interests of science, one of my hairs volunteers as a guinea pig. Ow! That's my hair. That's one of your hairs. Yes, that's where you've glued it down. Here's some glue. Yeah, and there's your, your, your hair yeah. sitting across there. So how close can we go with this thing? Well, we can get in there and look a little more closely. And we can see the size of your hair. And we can come down and look at one of these flakes. So that filling the screen there is one of the hairs off my head. Why don't we um, write your name on it? Don't be ridiculous. Yeah, we can do that before your very eyes. On a hair. On a hair. Here we go. Now, the iron beam is delivering about 23 million atoms per second into a spot that's about 50 atoms across. And you can see it's starting to arrive. This picture has been magnified 5,000 times. The eye in Richard is about 1,000 atoms wide. So it really is working the same way as sandblasting is. It's just dozens and, well, millions of these well, things. Right, on a very small scale. It's a lot smaller, yeah. It's a lot fiddlier, I'll grant it. Because that's my name. Well, I mean, barely noticeable across the width of one hair, one of your hairs. And how, how do you use that then for polish? Well, here we're coming down vertically onto the surface so that we blast away a pattern on the surface. If we wanted to polish something very smooth, then we'd fire those irons in at a very low angle to the surface so that they just knock away high spots on the surface and leave something that's very, very smooth. So this process that can etch my name lost in the width of a hair, you're saying is heavy duty. And if you want to have some real finesse and polish, you send it in at a more acute angle rather than perpendicular. This is your heavy engineering going. It's heavy engineering, but a very, very small scale, mm -hmm. atom by atom. And with such a perfect mirror, you won't be surprised to learn that Keck's engineers want to keep it spotless. The Keck mirror is a very special piece of equipment. But like any mirror, once in a while, it needs cleaning. So let's go clean it. Obviously, it being the Keck mirror, you don't just walk up to it with a duster and <laughs> clean it. No, there's slightly more to it. It's got to be very, very clean indeed. Almost every night, the mirror opens to the elements. Insects, moisture or volcanic cinders can smear and scratch the huge glass. So this is just a jet of CO2. And that's, you're cleaning the mirror, basically. Right. Correct. The, steel, the snow is soft and it goes right from a solid to a gas. It doesn't go to the liquid, so it doesn't uh, get the mirror wet. What, what are you actually cleaning off? I mean, it hasn't got thumbprints on it. The snow impacts the cinder and knocks the cinder off. And the cinder is tiny bits of volcanic... Correct. The cinder is really sharp, so it can remove the uh, coating quite easily. Technicians restore the mirror to perfection this way once a month. Thanks to Benjamin Tillman's high-speed abrasive blaster, 
optical engineers figure out how to fire a much 